Hello, good evening. 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 Okay, we are going to start uh, a new module today. Um, we are going to have a month to learn a lot of things. But first, I want um, to introduce myself because I am in charge of this uh, module or this month of learning. So the first thing is that my name is Elena Chavarria and I am in charge. Uh, if you have some ideas, some things, some um, words, I'll, whatever you want to learn, you can ask me. And if you have troubles with the process, if you have trouble uh, with uh, the platform, because you know that something very important for, uh, for you is the platform, the work in the platform. So if you have some trouble with that, you can ask me and we can work on that part on the sessions because we are going to have like um, a couple of minutes in which you can ask about uh, the exercises or you can ask about um, the structures or something like that uh, when we are in this session because we are here for one reason and that reason is to learn. I just uh, want to say some things uh, about uh, the way um, that I like to to teach. We can say it like that, the way that I like to teach. Um, I use a Google document in which I'm going to share all the information that I have for you. Um, I like to write the information in the moment. So in that case, I am not going to have like all the information in the document uh, when we are uh, starting the session. I'm going to write the information, the exercises, the structures, um, all of the things I'm going to do it in the session. So you can see um, how to write the sentences, how to create, um, conversations, uh, we are going to have vocabulary and all of the things. So I'm going to use the Google documents and I um, will send the link to you because you can access to the information um, all the time. So in that case, you're not going to download anything. You're not going to download some documents or Word documents or PowerPoint documents. In this case, we are going to have just one link. And you can see all the information there and you can uh, study those structures and those information. And also you can access to the document um, in the morning, for example, and you are going to have all the information there. So in that case, you are not going to download anything uh, because I like to work online and it is easier for you too. Um, another thing that is very important is that you can like have your camera on most of the time because it's important that we can see each other. Um, if you have something to say, you can ask permission to talk and you can say uh, or ask whatever you want. Um, another thing that is very important is that you can participate on the activities that I have for you. And if you have, again, if you have uh, troubles with the platform or the exercises, you can ask or say, hey, I have problems with uh, that topic and I need a feedback or something like that. And I will help you in the session because it's easier to understand the exercises if we are working together. But now we have a topic for today, but I have another thing that is important that I show you. So we are going to see a video uh, about the other courses. 
that we can uh, find in e support. So it is necessary that we can uh, see the following uh, video. Vamos a ver un video. Eh, dura aproximadamente 4 minutos 44 segundos. Eh, lo vamos a poner al inicio de, de esta sesión y ya luego vamos a pasar a nuestro tema, que es con el que vamos a iniciar este módulo. Así que vamos a ver el siguiente video. If you have trouble uh, watching the video or hearing the sound, you can tell me. So let's begin. El Insafort ha trabajado con un alto nivel de profesionalismo, pensando siempre en incrementar las posibilidades de crecimiento para la gente de nuestro país. Nos hemos dedicado a que a través de la formación se generen oportunidades para los salvadoreños y así cada vez más, en un mundo más competitivo y globalizado, siempre existan en nuestro país posibilidades de superación para todos. Miles de hombres y mujeres han logrado desarrollarse profesionalmente y han ampliado sus conocimientos y posibilidades laborales a través de los diferentes programas de formación que son parte del sistema de formación profesional, el cual ofrece programas de formación para todos los niveles de recurso humano dentro de una empresa. Se ha incrementado productividad de muchas industrias y cientos de empresas a través de la capacitación y formación de cientos de miles de salvadoreños con programas como Área Técnica, ofreciendo cursos técnicos para mejorar el desempeño operativo y tecnológico de los trabajadores. Competencias Gerenciales, con temas de capacitación para complementar y actualizar conocimientos para áreas de gerencia. Inglés para el Trabajo. Contenidos estandarizados del inglés para hacer a los trabajadores más eficientes y productivos en el desempeño de sus funciones. Mejora de competitividad de las MIPES. Amplios temas de capacitación, específicos para micro y pequeños empresarios. Cursos cerrados y abiertos. Tratando temas de capacitación para trabajadores de las empresas cotizantes de Insaforp. Insaforp Online. Cursos online con el horario y ubicación que más convenga al usuario para la constante capacitación en múltiples temas y profesiones. Trabajando con el compromiso claro de ayudar al desarrollo del país y con un equipo profesional entregado a buscar oportunidades para nuestra gente, es que Insaport ha logrado tener un modelo de gobernanza y gestión ejemplar que tiene como base el diálogo permanente entre el sector empleador, laboral y el gobierno formando a los trabajadores, capacitando a la gente de nuestro país. Es que transformamos la vida de las familias salvadoreñas, porque en Insaport trabajamos todos los días sabiendo que, a través del conocimiento, es que estamos formando un mejor El Salvador. Con el objetivo de formar en igualdad el Instituto Salvadoreño de Formación Profesional INSAFOR, presentó en el año 2017 la Guía para la Prevención y Erradicación de la Discriminación contra las Mujeres en los Centros de Formación Fijos, donde se desarrollan programas permanentes de formación profesional del INSAFOR, cuya elaboración contó con el apoyo de la Organización Internacional del Trabajo, OIT, y su objetivo a largo plazo es contribuir a mejorar las condiciones y oportunidades de acceso y permanencia de las mujeres en los procesos de formación profesional sin discriminación de ningún tipo. La guía pretende poner a disposición de Insafor y de sus centros colaboradores un instrumento que les permita identificar, conocer, prevenir, atender y erradicar progresivamente Cualquier discriminación por razones de género contra la mujer. Posteriormente, el INSAFOR desarrolló un plan piloto de implementación de la guía en tres centros de formación fijos. Y es así como surgen cuatro instrumentos fundamentales para la aplicabilidad de la guía, siendo estos manual de convivencia, protocolo de atención en casos de bullying y acoso sexual, lineamientos para la comunicación de los programas de formación con lenguaje inclusivo no sexista, y la guía metodológica para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres. Dichos documentos fueron elaborados con el enfoque de derechos humanos y de género, estableciendo medidas que garanticen relaciones de respeto, igualdad y equidad entre todas las personas que forman parte y conviven en los centros de formación profesional. 
De esta forma, el INSAFOR asume la igualdad de género como un principio transversal de trabajo, entregando a los centros de formación estas cuatro herramientas que complementan la guía para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres, a fin de que sean puestas en práctica en beneficio de las usuarias de la formación profesional. INSAFOR, formando en igualdad. Okay, that's the information that we have about the other courses that you can find on um, on e support. So it is necessary that you can uh, know that information. So that's uh, the video that we have for uh, that new information that you need to know. So now we are going to begin with uh, this uh, module, with this uh, course, and with this new information. So, I was saying that we are going to work in a, a Google document online. So I'm going to share the document in which we are going to have all the information that you are going to use for this course. So I'm going to share the document that is this one. And, I will send to you the link of this uh, document later. So we're going to start. And another thing that I like to do is to uh, have this kind of phrases at the beginning of the week. In this case, it's not all uh, the week. This is just for the beginning on Monday. So uh, we are going to have this kind of um, the phrases every Monday. So the first for this week is tomorrow is going to be the best day ever. In this case, it's not like I'm just going to say it is phrase just for tomorrow. We are going to say it every day because tomorrow is going to be the best day ever. Maybe we are going to have troubles. We are going to have problems. We are going to have some things that make us feel sad or down or anything like that. But we need to say tomorrow is going to be the best day ever because we need to find the energy to do the things that we need to do. So now I have here the topic. And in this case, I'm going to do it like this, is past tense. That is the first uh, topic that we are going to develop today. It is the past tense. It is a, maybe we can say it's a kind of a easy topic. It's kind of basic, but we need to relearn and make some reviews about the things that we know. Um, we need to, to know if we can uh, create sentences, if we know the structures and all of the things. So in this case, we are going to uh, begin with past ya sabemos que ese es un tema bastante sencillo. Eh, podemos decir que es un tema básico, que ya lo hemos visto en otros cursos, o que nosotros ya lo sabemos. But we are going to know more information about this topic. So we are going to begin. And in this case, we know that the simple path, in this case, we are going to talk about the simple path, is a verb tense. Uh, that is used to talk about things that happened or existed before now. So in that case, we know that we are talking about the past. So in that case, we are talking about situations that happened in the past and, and in that moment. Imagine someone asked you what your brother Pedro did while he was in town last weekend, for example. You have a brother, and your brother's uh, name is Pedro. So you find some friends, and they are asking you, what did your brother do in town the last week? So you need to think about uh, the, um, the actions that uh, Pedro did the last week. So we are going to begin with that part. We are going to say that we are going to talk about uh, the past. It's the beginning of our topic. So, 
we have an example. That is the first thing. We have an example. But I need to change this color because it is not like that. So let me see where it is. Because it is not like that. So I can find it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't need that color. So in the example, we say Pedro entered a hula hop contest. That is the action. That is the thing that he did when he was in town. Pedro a hula hop So that is the sentence. Very simple. Pedro entered a hula hop contest. We know that he was doing something like that. So let me do it this Kind of bigger because I don't know if it's okay for you. So here we are. Okay, so we have another one and it, it says he won the silver medal. He won the silver medal. So we have two actions. One, he entered a hula hop contest and also he won the silver medal. So in that case, when someone is asking you for the action that someone did in the past, we are going to use, as we know, this kind of verb. In this case, I need to mark this verb in past. So in that case, we have here the structure that we are going to follow when we are using the past tense. So we need to have the subject, then the verb in past, and then the complement. Very, very simple, because in this case, we are talking about the simple past. So in that case, we are not going to use complicated or very, very long sentences. So in this case, we're going to use this easy, short sentence. So the simple past tense show that you are talking about something that has already happened unlike the past continuous tense. But in this case, we're going to divide those tenses. But the first thing, and this is very important. So this is the, the thing that we need to keep in mind. The simple past tense shows that you are talking about something that has already happened, something that finished in the past. And for that reason, we were talking about also the past continuous. And it says that in the past continuous, uh, which is used to talk about past events that happen over a period of time, and the simple past tense emphasize that the action is finished. So, in este caso, nosotros estamos hablando de un tiempo en el que ya sucedieron las cosas. Um, ya pasó, ya finalizó, solo nos queda como un recuerdo. En otros eh, tiempos, en otros tenses, nosotros podemos hablar de acciones en el pasado, pero que no siempre han finalizado. O, que van a tener una parte importante en el futuro o en el presente. Pero en este caso, tiene que ser así. Inició en el pasado, finalizó en el pasado y ya está. No nos va a servir a nosotros para el presente ni va a terminar en un tiempo futuro. So in this case, it's tiempo past because it is ended in that time. And we have another example. We're talking about Pedro. That is our main actor today. It says, Pedro admired the way the light glinted of his silver medal.
So in that case, we have the verb here that is admired, that is in past, because it's telling us that he was like looking at the silver medal and he was kind of uh, excited about the light, the, the, the way in which we can see the light in the silver medal. So in that case, it's something that happened in that moment, but it is not relevant right now because it is not like he is going to see every day the same um, thing in the medal. So in that case, it's something that happened in the past. You can also use the simple past to talk about a past state of being, such as the way someone felt about something. This is often expressed with the simple past tense of the verb to be. In this case, we are going to use the verb to be. And an adjective, noun, or prepositional phrase. So in that case, we can also use the simple past to talk about um the way someone feels about something. We can say, ah, he felt sad, and um, he felt happy, he felt uh, excited, he felt scared, or something like that. We were it uh, or we are going to talk about the um the feelings, how you feel about uh earthquake, or how do you feel about uh, the beach, or how did you feel when you get your first job? So in that case, we were talking about um, feelings that we can, uh, we can say again, that we can feel in that uh, precise moment in the past. So in that case, it says, you can also use So in this case, I am just um, writing the important points of the information that I have for you because I have a lot of information here, but I am just writing the key points or the key idea or the main ideas of the things that I am uh, talking to you. So in that case, you're not going to have all the information right in the document. So we are saying that we are going to use it to talk about the past state of being the way we feel about something. So in that case, we are going to use the verb to be. In this case, the verb to be in an adjective. You know that the adjectives are word that we use to describe something, a person, an animal, or something like that. So in that case, we're going to use the verb to be and an adjective to talk about the way we feel about something. And we have examples, of course. And we have the first one. Again, we are going to use the name Pedro because we are going to mark that in that case. So Pedro was proud. of his hula hop victory. So in that case, uh, Victoria, tell me. Uh, teacher, I have a question. Tell me. Uh, now we are we talking about, about past, past tense, right? Yes. But was it a past progressive or no? 
No, in that case, it's not progressive because you're not going to use the ING form. Ah, all right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. Yes. In this case, it's just the simple part because you are using uh, the verbs uh, with the endings. In this case, we are using the verb to be because it's was and where, and the other verbs, ED, or the, they change the form. And we are going to say some examples about the verbs. But if you are talking about the past progressive, is when you are using, in this case, the verb to be, and the ING form. So in this case, it's not like that. So in this case, it's just past, um, a simple past. So in this case, here, we have the uh, structure that we were saying. We are going to use the verb to be, and we are going to use the adjective. Was is the verb to be in past, and proud is the adjective. Pedro estaba orgulloso de su victoria en el concurso de Hula Hop. O sea, él se sintió orgulloso de haber ganado el segundo lugar in this case. So he was feeling proud in that moment. So for that reason, we are using the verb to be and we are using the adjective. And also we say, the contest was the highlight of this week. In this case, you're saying that uh, the contest was the main activity of this week, because in that case, it's like, um, we can say that it's the, the, the key point of that activity that or the activities that we were performing in that week. Oh my God, what is that? Okay, so in that case, we are saying that it was very, very important. We can say it like that. So. In that case, we are talking about the past and we're talking about the examples and how can we use it and all of that thing. But how can we formulate the simple past? What is the thing that we need to do to create these, um, these sentences? Or how can we use the simple past? So we are going to see how can we create uh, sentences in positive, in negative, question, and all of that thing. How to formulate the simple past. Here we are. For regular verbs, we know that we have two different kind of verbs. We have the regular verbs and we have the irregular verbs. So in that case, we are going to mark the difference between the regular verbs and the irregular verbs. So for a regular verbs, we need to add, in some cases, ed to the root. Or in some cases, we're just going to add D at the end. In that case, we know that in some cases, uh, we have a verb that ends in E. So in that case, we're just going to add the D of the end. And if we don't have that ending, we're going to add ED at the end. But in this case, it's just for regular verbs. For irregular verbs, is a different topic. And we are going to uh, see why. So we have some examples of this irregular verb. 
For the first one, we have play, like this. So we need to add something at the end. So in that case, we're going to change and we are going to add ed, play. Then we have type. In this case, we have the e at the end. So in that case, we are just going to add d. Then we have another one, listen. And in this case, we don't have the E at the end, so we are going to add E, D. Then we have a push. Again, we don't have the E. And we say like this. And then love. And in this case, we have the E. And add D. Boom. That's it. Very, very simple for the regular verb. Because in some cases, it is just to do that to have the, um, the new form or the past form of the verb. It is not like very, very complicated with this kind of verb. Then, for the regular verbs, uh, things get more complicated. For the simple past tense of some irregular verbs, look exactly like the root form. In this case, when we have the irregular verb, um, there are some verbs that don't change anything because they have or they maintain the same form. So in that case, we are just going to know um, if the verb is in past or something like that by the context of the sentence. Para la forma regular es bastante sencillo saber si está en pasado o no, porque como lo vemos, solo le agregamos la D o la ED y ya lo completamos, ya lo tenemos así para el pasado. En cambio, con los verbos irregulares es diferente. Primero, cambia su forma en muchos de los verbos, son formas diferentes, se escribe de manera diferente. Eh, pero también tenemos aquellos que no cambian, que son los mismos. Eh, tenemos verbos que no van a cambiar en ninguna de sus formas, pero que solo nos vamos a dar cuenta que son diferentes o que están hablando de un tiempo diferente por el contexto de la oración. Mientras más hablamos, sabemos que estamos hablando en pasado, en presente o en futuro, o estamos utilizando una estructura en específico, pero ahí es donde nosotros nos vamos a dar cuenta de qué estamos utilizando o para qué estamos utilizando ese verbo, porque no va a cambiar. So in this case, we have some examples of the situation because we know that in some cases it's not going to change. And we have the first one that is search, that in past is the same. Then we have cut, again, the same situation. Then we have sit, or set in this case, I mean, set. Then a coast and we have heat. So in this case, we're not going to change it because in that case, it's the same for in person and in past. So in that case, it's like we need to know um, the context of the situation. Or if you know that you were talking in past, you know that in that case, the verb is use it to talk about the past. For other irregular verbs, including the verb to be, the simple past form are more erratic. In that case, we are going to change the form of the verb. 
So in other cases, we are going to change it. And we are going to say here, other irregular verbs. And we have the examples. We have, for example, C. We are going to change in it fast. So then build, build, it change. Then we have go and in past when. Then we have a do and in past did. Right, wrote. And then we have the verb to be um, is, are, and it changed to was and where. So in that case, the irregular verbs change their form. And in that case, it's, it's like, um, it's like easier to find that we are using it for past situation and we're talking about past situation. Now, in that case, it is not like very complicated to create sentences in positive uh, using this one because we are going to write some examples in past. So let's see. I was in my room yesterday. Then I did my homework. I let's see, let's see, let's see. I could my finger mm, last week, for example. So if that is another important thing that we need to, to know. In this kind of sentences, we are going to use uh, this kind of word, like this one. These kind of words are going to help us to understand uh, easier the context of uh, the sentence, because in this case, I cut my finger. If I say I cut my finger, you can uh, understand that I cut it right now in this precise moment. But if I said I cut my finger last week, you know that I did it the last week. So I was talking about the past, not in this moment. So when you are going to like emphasize the time in which you are going to do something or you did something, you can use that kind of word. Um, explaining or giving more information about the time. Así que vamos a utilizar ese tipo de frases o palabras cuando le vamos a poner un énfasis a la situación, a la acción, y queremos decir, ah, yo lo hice ayer, anoche, hoy en la mañana, porque obviamente ya es pasado. So, we're going to help people to understand the time in which we did something. So now for negative sentence. So in this case, in this case you know that uh, you're going to have for this positive sentence, you're going to have the subject plus the verb in past. And you are going to have the complement. And that is the formula. Very, very simple and very, very easy. You need to have the subject. It is like the pronoun or the name of the people or something like that. Then the verb in past, that is the action that this subject is doing. And the complement. And that's it. So for a narrative sentence. Let's see what is the structure and all of the information that we have for the negative sentence. How to create simple has negative sentence. 
So for this one, we have the formula. N is the following. Did not, in this case, you know that did not, it is not like. Um, in this case, it's not like the first thing. So we are going to use this object again at the beginning. Subject plus did not plus the root form of the verb. Okay, in this case, very, very important. You are going to use did. In this case, did is not the main verb. This one is an auxiliary. And in this case, this auxiliary is telling you that your uh, sentence is in past. So it is not necessary that you, uh, that you use did and the past form of the verb, because in that case, it is incorrect. So if the auxiliary is in past, you are not going to use the verb in past. Así que para este tipo de oraciones, si nuestro auxiliar, que en este caso es did, ya está en pasado, ya no vamos a volver a utilizar nuestro verbo en pasado, porque ya estamos diciendo que nuestra oración está en pasado. Así que ya no es necesario que volvamos a ocupar los eh, verbos en pasado. Aquí en este caso los escribimos en su forma normal, su forma base, su forma raíz, como lo dice la palabra. Example. We have two examples. Again, we are going to talk about Pedro. And it says, Pedro did not talk too much. So in that case, he was not like talking too much. And the second one, Pedro, Pedro's girlfriend, didn't see the cooking contest. In this case, we're going to use the contraction. Didn't see the cooking contest. So here we have, this is the main verb. And in this case, we're going to use it in a main form. And this one also. Because we have the auxiliary that is telling me that I am talking about the past. Pedro did not talk too much when in the past, when he was a child, in last year, in the last class, or something like that. And then the second one, Pedro's girlfriend didn't see the cooking contest. When? Maybe yesterday, last night, last week, uh, last month, anything like that. So in that case, again, very, very simple. In, the, in that case, you're just going to change a little bit the sentence that you have in a present. I mean, in a positive, not in present, in positive. Because in that case, you are going to use just the auxiliary not in the negative sentence. For diversity, uh, you don't need the auxiliary did. So in that case, you are not going to use the auxiliary did when you are using the verb to be. When the subject of the sentence is singular, we use was not or wasn't. And when the subject is plural, we use were not or were, were, weren't in that case. So in that case, we are not going to use did or auxiliary when we are using the verb to be.
That is the construction weapon. And we have some examples for this. That's it. We have the number one. The third place winner was not happy. The third place winner was, was not happy. Of course, because he is the third place. So in that case, uh, there are people that didn't like that. So in that case, he was not happy. Then we have the second one. My sister was not ready for the party. My sister was not ready for the party. Then the third one. She wasn't my sister. So in this case, we have the verb to be a negative. In that case, we're going to use the negative one. And the last part of this structure of this stand are the questions. So we are going to see how to create questions um, using this uh, sense that is the simple part. And that's the last part of this topic. How to ask your question? And we have here the formula for asking a question in the simple past tense is D plus subject plus root one of a diverse. So in this case, um, when uh, I was talking about uh, the memory form of uh, the, uh, the sentence, I was telling you that. It is not the first thing that we are going to write in the sentence. That is the auxiliary. But in this case, we are going to use the auxiliary D at the beginning of the structure of the sentence because we are going to transform that sentence into a question. So, the formula for asking a question. In the simple past frame, here, and in this case, we have did plus subject plus root form of the verb.
Porque en muchos de los casos a veces se nos olvida poner el punto al final de la oración, se nos olvida poner eh, el signo de interrogación y todo eso. Okay, um, I'm going to have some trouble with my internet connection because it's raining so hard right now. So, but it's not like we can do anything about that. Going at it right now, it's raining, raining, raining. We're going to end the we have just like 30 minutes and so we're going to end the So let's share the screen again. So just remember to write the the uh, points, uh, the periods, the question mark, and all of that thing. So. In the case you have the formula or the question, but let me. And we have like an example for this. And the example is the following. D, in this case, we're going to start with D. D, Pedro. Win, in this case, we are not going to use the very impact. Did Pedro win the gold medal? Or the silver medal? In this case, we're asking about um, the contest, the Hula Hot contest. In which uh, Pedro participate, and in that case, the Pedro win the gold medal or the silver medal. We know that he won the silver medal because we um, get that information uh, at the beginning of the question. So in that case, we know that information. Then we have another one. Where did Pedro go to celebrate? In this case, we are not going to use did at the beginning. We are going to use the WH question word. Because we have like two different types of questions, in that case, we are going to use the WH word or WH question. Where did Pedro go to celebrate? Where did Pedro go to celebrate? A donde fue, verdad? Celebrar. When asking a question with the verb to be, you don't need the auxiliary the again. If we are going to use the um, verb to be, we are not going to use the auxiliary the. And in this case, we are going to create questions with the verb to be. And we have a formula for that kind of question. What and where? Plus the subject. That is the base uh, form or the base thing that we need to know about this kind of question with a uh, verb to be. And we have the example. Was Pedro in a good mood after the contest? In this case, we are not using the auxiliary. Then, were people talking uh, a lot of taking a lot of pictures? Taking a lot of pictures. So, this one, this uh, last question in this case is like. 
in the case we are using the i and g form of the verb. So in that case, it's a continuous, but just that example. So I'm going to write some examples of common regular verbs. Irregular and regular verbs, but I am going to write it in this document. I will send to you this link maybe tomorrow morning, and you can access to the information that I'm going to add to the document because I have two um, tables in which you are going to see uh, some common regular and irregular verbs. Um, but that is like extra information about the topic because we're going to end this topic today and we're going to have another topic tomorrow so in that case uh, you're going to see just more information in the document about the topic so in that case it is not necessary to write all that information right now because we have just two minutes to end the session so tomorrow i will send you the link and you are going to find more information about the topic in that case, the simple fact is not like very, very complicated because you have information about that a topic. So in this case, it's just like making reviews of this kind of a topic. So that is a one thing that is very, very um, a simple right now. And tomorrow we're going to talk about years here because we are going to follow the uh, path. But in that case, we're going to talk about use two. Um, in this session, because it's the first one, we're not going to have like some exercises and all that thing, but tomorrow we are going to have some exercises because we need to talk, we need to produce and all of that thing. So tomorrow we are going to have some examples, some exercises, some activities and some things like that. But today we're not going to have that kind of activity right now because it's the first one. And we need to uh, feel confident in this session. So um, if you have questions, if you have something to say, you can say it right now. And if not, we're almost done with the first session. So someone has a question or something that uh, wants to say, because we are going to end the session right now. Oh, we are okay. I think we are okay. So we are going to end the session here. That is the first session. We are going to see color tomorrow. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow in the next session. Thank you, Miss. Have a nice night. Thank you. Thank you.